Hello and welcome to another episode of Ask the Experts. I'm Rachel Landry and today I'm joined by my colleague Amanda Lind, the technical content writer here at the company. Amanda will be talking to us today about exploring data in the path profile view. All right, Amanda, take it away. So today I'm going to talk about the path profile tool. This is a tool that lets you take a perpendicular per perspective of your elevation data to better see its structure and how it relates to other layers. You can do something similar with the 3D viewer in Global Mapper, and you can turn the data to look at it from all sides, but you can't really look at the middle of the data to get like a, a perpendicular swath of it. And to do this, we use the path profile tool. Now for today's demonstration, I have a few different layer types loaded, just as an example. I have some vector data loaded, some building features, some road lines, and some little point features here, along with a little stream. I have two different DEMs, digital elevation raster layers loaded. And I also have a point layer, a LIDAR layer. And we can see all of those in the path profile tool. So the easiest way to use the tool is to grab the path profile icon. That's this little stripy mountain button here up at the top which changes your cursor to let you draw a 3D path through the data. So to start the 3D path, I'm going to left click. Then you can left click as many times as you want to add vertices. And then I'm going to right click to end it. And upon the right click, it automatically opens this path profile window. And it's dockable, so I'm going to dock it here on the bottom. And we can see this top digital uh, surface model elevation value grid. And we can see the vertices, these little yellow points here of the line that I just drew. Now you'll notice that it doesn't show the line features or these point features or the other uh, elevation raster, but we can add those in the path profile settings. So to open the settings, you can easily click on this little icon here with the wrench or you can right click and go to path profile settings. It's the same thing. So if we want to see those vector layers, the line feature and the point feature, we can enable those by checking these boxes in the bottom left hand corner. This first option here is to draw the line or area features that cross path. And then new in version 24 is this ability to draw 3D point features that, um, in the path corridor. Note that these vector features will only appear if they have elevation data. If they don't have elevation data, they won't appear. I'll click OK to apply those settings and we can now see them reflected in the path profile tool. We can see this blue stream down here in the bottom and this little white road layer, we can see its vectors show up here as well. And if I expand the path a little bit, the swath width will be able to see those red points as well. So I'm going to open up the settings again to, instead of looking at a narrow stripe, to look at a little bit wider to grab a little bit more data. And I do that by changing this elevation corridor section here. The distance from path is 16 feet by default. I'm going to go ahead and make it a little smaller. We'll change it to 10. And the default option is to only sample exactly a long path. So this will only look at data that directly intersects the line that I drew across the landscape. To change that, I can choose the option to uh, look at the maximum elevation, the minimum elevation, or the average. So this wants to know what kind of data to display with the um, digital surface model underneath. But since we're just hoping to look at the points, I'm going to go ahead and hit keep average. It's going to change the smooth data to something a little more choppy, but that's OK. I'll click all right and we can see these red point features. Note that they keep the same style, the same color, the same shape settings as in the workspace. So if you want these points to be larger, if you want them to be a different color, then you will change those in your um, point style settings for that individual layer. You can see here that this line I drew isn't exactly perfect. So if I wanted to draw a path profile that exactly matched the road layer underneath to go directly across the dam, I could use that existing line feature as a path profile. So to do that, I'm going to close the existing line I already have. I'm going to grab my digitizer tool and I'm going to select the line feature here. And with the line feature selected, I'm going to right click anywhere in the workspace. I'm going to go to analysis measurement and under analysis measurement, I'm going to click on path profile and this will automatically create a path to that existing line feature. So we can see that it matches exactly along those lines and we can see the little red dots on top of it as well. We can also see that it inherited the, a bit of a wider swath from my last setting. So it's only showing one digital surface model here. It's only showing this top layer. If we want to show both layers, that's another setting within the path profile tool. So turning the settings back on, I'm going to change this back to 
only keep sample along path just because it's a little smoother. And then I'm going to check the option to draw separate line paths for each terrain layer. And this is going to draw a new line along with the existing line so we can see and compare those two terrains. But additionally, to help kind of distinguish them a little bit, I'm gonna check the option to draw a legend for that as well. So we'll be able to see the differences in color. So we'll click okay. And we can see, if I zoom in a little bit, we can see the difference between this orange dashed digital surface model and this blue dashed digital terrain model line. The colors from these can be changed in the right click menu in um, the path profile tool. So I'll click anywhere in here and here are a bunch of different options to let you change the color. So you can change the background color of the entire path profile tool here. You can see the default is white, but if you're working with LiDAR data, something where you have a lot of light gray points, sometimes changing this to black can help with that as well to make them stand out a little bit more. With that, you can also change the set text grid font color. So those are these uh, dashed lines and these uh, numbers and labels with a scale bar there. You could change that to white. So if you were to change the background to white, you would want to change the text to black and uh, vice versa. And you can change all sorts of settings here. Also in the path profile tool, we can look at LiDAR data. So let's go ahead and turn that option on here. And from LiDAR data, I've already gone through and pre-classified this. We have some ground points, we have some green vegetation, and we have some orange buildings. And from that, I've extracted the building layer here. So we have a footprint and we have the roof planes. And we can look at that um, from a perpendicular perspective in this tool as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and reactivate the path profile tool, draw a line across the building, left click to start, right click to end. And then we can see the LiDAR data and the different uh, digital surface model options. Now the ability, the ability to see LiDAR data in the path profile tool is another option in settings. This one is turned on by default, but if you aren't able to see it, make sure this checkbox near the bottom right hand corner is checked to display LiDAR points near the path. Now this option, similar to that elevation corridor we were looking at earlier, this option also um, lets you specify how wide of a swath of LiDAR you want to look at. So if you look at more LiDAR data, you'll get uh, a more in-depth, you'll be able to look at more points, but that can also slow it down a little bit or sometimes make it too noisy. So you can mess with those settings here to um, better fit your particular type of data. I'll click OK. And we can really see the difference here between the digital elevation model, so that's using just the ground points of the LiDAR, and the digital surface model, which is also looking at the vegetation in the buildings too. Now also displayed here, because we have this building loaded, we can see the point features here. You can also see, if I zoom in a little bit in the workspace, as I move my mouse along the path profile tool, you can see a little red X mirrored up in the top window. So that lets you see where in the data you're looking at in the path profile tool. Another way to mark features that you see in the path profile tool is to create a point. So anywhere here that I want to create a point, say I want to put it right on the top of this chimney. I don't really, for, for this example, I can say that I don't really know what that is. I want to look at it more in the 3D viewer. I can do that by right clicking there and clicking create a point feature at a cursor location. And this is just like creating a regular vector feature where it'll create a new layer here or you can add it to an existing layer and it'll have the 3D elevation data as well. You can also create line features. Similarly, for that in the path profile tool, you'll grab the measure tool because this allows you to draw the line. So you click a starting point, and when you right click for an end point, there's an option here to save this subpath line. So you can clear it or you can also save it, and that lets you um, export the line as well. So you left click to stop it, and then you end up with the create line feature from subpath. So that'll save the line feature with the vertice in each place you clicked along with, of course, the um, measurement options with that. Speaking of measuring, this is also a, another great use with the path profile tool, especially if you're working with LiDAR data, is to look at not only the slope of your data set, but how thick your ground points are here. So you want to look at the best fit line or how far, how thick your ground layer is. If that's very thick, you want to tell Global Mapper that, otherwise it won't classify the top line. Or if it's very thin, you want to mark that as well so it doesn't classify the top as grass. And for the slope in the automatic ground classification tool, this measurement tool is a great way to get that as well. Just throwing that in because I, uh, I send that out a lot to our um, LiDAR users for Global Mapper. Though it isn't necessarily needed for path profile. 
Another perspective that we can get is to chop it up into different sections. So instead of looking at the entire, um, the entire line at once, we can kind of turn 90 degrees and start to look at the building in different sections. So I'm going to open our settings tool again, and we'll check this option up here to display a series of profiles perpendicular to the path. So there's a perpendicular sampling option here, and this lets you choose how many different samples you would like to break your line into. I'm going to leave it at the default of 30, but you can also do it um, by specific meters. So you could draw a path profile every two meters if you wanted to for however many fits in the length of line you've already drawn, or to sample elevations at the, uh, at the vertices of the line you've drawn only. But I'll keep that at default. And we'll click Apply, and we can see that we are now looking at this from a different perpendicular perspective. So we haven't come up to the building yet, so you can't see anything, but I'm going to click on this Move to Next Perpendicular Profile button, and this lets me scooch along the different profiles I've created. So we can see now this tree right here is coming into, coming into view, and we can really begin to see the top of the building there that's been extracted. So we can see those orange LiDAR points, and we can also see the digital surface mile reflected underneath it. And these little black dots are the vertices of the area features that are intersecting with this line as well. So this lets you see all of the different data types and how they reflect in the tool. So you can zoom in and see how Global Mapper created your digital surface model from the LiDAR, and you can make those changes as well, or how your LiDAR classification turned out. And there's really no limit to what you can do with the Path Profile tool with your elevation data. Back to you, Rachel. Amanda, thank you so much for that explanation. I know that our users will find it very useful. If you'd like to learn more about Global Mapper or Global Mapper Pro, please visit bloomrebelgeo.com today. And as always, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Ask the Experts, and we hope to see you next time.